So with the Nathan Teller saga continuing, hashtag free teller exploding all over Twitter and even our owner's daughter getting involved. It's time to discuss where Nathan Teller will be, how much he'll cost, how he fits into Burnley and Southampton system, or with St. Rob from Twitter. All right, Rob, how are you doing, mate? Welcome to the channel. Hope you're doing, hope you're doing all right. Yes, mate, all good, thank you. It's been a weird, it's been a pretty weird day, but uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm all good, thank you, mate. Yeah, there's been a, there's been a lot of drama on Twitter with all the, the free Nathan Teller stuff, so I guess we've kind of got quite a lot to talk about about realistically with um, Free Nathan Teller and different movie cuts being put out there of Teller trying to escape. Right, so first what I want to talk about is how you're feeling after today. Obviously, Twitter has been mental. Teller trending, Burnley trending, all just because um, the owner's daughter has been making some jokes about Teller leaving. So I guess it must be quite weird being a Southampton fan watching it all. Yeah, I mean, I, I, part, part of me thinks is this, is this like borderline illegal, right? It's, it's just so weird. Like, like you've, never, you've never seen anything like it before. Um, obviously, loads of loads of accounts this morning just started putting out hashtag retailer, hashtag retailer. I mean, we've seen it over the last couple of days and weeks, but yeah, that that TikTok uh, that Alan Pace's daughter put out, um, you know, if that's been signed off by her dad, who he apparently, she apparently runs his, um, his Instagram. I don't know that, but yeah, it's just really weird. I mean, I mean, from if you look at it from a, if we were talking purely transfer speculation, I don't think any Saints fan right now is, is is worried about anything being necessarily imminent, seeing as Burnley have only just put in like a nine million pound bid when everyone knows that the asking price for Teller is going to be around that 15, 20 region. And it seems like it's going to be one that bubbles on, but it, it is weird. I mean, like, yeah, of course, it's a bit of fun, but if you don't end up signing him, I think it's incredibly embarrassing. I, I just, oh, yeah. I just, I, I just, I just, I just don't get it because it's, you're just putting yourself in, in a situation now where you just, you're just putting yourself up for embarrassment. And if you sign him, you might, I mean, Burnley make great announcement videos. You might get a good announcement video out of it, but you already make good ones anyway. So I don't, I don't really see how, I mean, I mean, I put, I put a tweet out. So our uh, new uh, director of football, Jason Wilcox, has been very open in the media about um, you know, standing strong on 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 our um, valuations of players, and that we will only sell on our terms, that kind of stuff. And like a TikTok from I don't I don't know how old she is, but a TikTok from from a, from a young girl about Nathan Teller and freeing him and, and all this shit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to make him sit there and think, oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could actually sell Teller for that. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm just going to let him go. I feel bad. Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to leave it. But yeah, really, really, I don't. It's hard to react to. So honestly, I've never seen it. Before, it's, so. Weird. When I when it obviously came about, I was thinking like, could the club get in trouble for it? Because realistically, like, mm. it's kind of virgin. I guess it is support kind of virgin on the whole tapping up to all that sort of thing. Like, mm. if a transfer isn't done, which from reports it says that it isn't actually completed just yet, although it's likely to happen, I think it's it, it could it could go down a wrong path, especially if the transfer doesn't get done. Because obviously, quite a few people have absolutely melted on Twitter. I'm sure Southampton fans will be absolutely loving it <laughs> at the moment because there's nothing that's actually done and they can just absolutely rinse through Twitter yeah. if he doesn't if he doesn't join Burnley. But at the same time, I guess it is like, it's all just about causing a stir for us, obviously. Mm -hmm. At the moment, with us company coming in, we've been contacts over in America. We've been spreading all over. So I guess at the moment, alongside, like you said before, the brilliant announcement videos, I guess we are kind of are everywhere at the yeah. moment. So yeah, uh, even yeah. if it is a little bit stupid, it's still kind of pushing the whole thing about Burnley, like everywhere, constantly, always doing stuff. So I get what it means. And if I was a Southampton fan, I'd be like, geez, this is proper weird. And especially, if, I think even if I was, if I was working at Southampton, like Wilcox, mm. I would be like, this is seriously strange, especially if nothing's yeah. been guaranteed. So it is a weird one. I do think it's really funny though. Like I think a lot of the videos that have been done are actually quite quite funny. Uh, yeah, there's like, been some time I'm... taking into some of these videos, honestly. Some serious oh, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But well, Southampton fans are taking it quite well as well, to be fair. It's like it's all a bit of all a bit of a joke. So but yeah, it is I do get what you mean. I do think it is a little bit strange. Maybe virgin on illegal. A bit cringe in it, Link. So obviously you being a, a Southampton fan, being close at the whole Southampton side than me, obviously I only see it from pretty much the Burns perspective. I want to know how you're feeling towards the Teller situation at the moment. How is it kind of developing on the Southampton end? Is there anything saying he's likely to leave? Anything like that? And how do you really think about if he does leave, how much would you want mm. for him and how much you think would actually happen? If you look at a, a player like Teller, um, so, so Teller's now been with us for about seven years. Uh, so we signed him from Arsenal. 
uh, well, it was a, I believe it was he was a free agent uh, at the age of at the age of 17, um, and he was really promising in our, in our youth teams, and then he suffered an ACL injury um, at the age of 19, I believe. So that kind of suffered his growth, and he broke in at the age of 21 under Ralph, and then you know we kind of helped him bring bring him through. But we always knew that there was a player there. He, obviously, his, his raw pace is incredible. Um, he had to refine his technical ability and his finishing, which is exactly why we sent him out on loan. Uh, it's really interesting because Teller signed a, a two and a half year, three and a half year contract back in uh, January 2022, I believe, um, that kind of kept him at the club until until 2025. He would have known when he signed that contract that the plan was for him to go out on loan. Right? There, there would have been there would have been things in place basically saying, you know, if, if, if we can't find a role for you, you know, we will send you out on loan because it, everyone knew that he wasn't ready for the Premier League. He had like two goals in 35 games. It's not good enough yeah, for a club yeah. that's fighting relegation. And as I said, everyone knew there was a player there. So sending him out on loan was a perfect thing to do. In my opinion, he must have known that if he performs on loan, Saints are going to want to obviously bring him back and keep him. That's why there was no option to buy obligation to buy clause because we still believed in him. If you go back and, and look at when he signed that contract, um, one of the quotes he said is he wanted to repay the favor the club had in him and I think now in our current situation he has a chance to do that of course words are just words until there's action behind them yeah um but I, I think from Saints's point of view obviously us going down you guys going up uh roles reversed uh Teller your top goal scorer last year and you're not willing to pay 15 20 million for him at the moment it's, it's just really weird for me I, th I I would have thought that he's your top goal scorer everyone loves him he's got his own song you know the admin team love him yeah. media team love him he's a lovely guy fans love him and yet Burnley aren't willing to spend 15 20 million on him at present he, he did massively over, over, over perform his xg last year um but obviously it's, it's not something you, you kind of need to rush into i think from saints's perspective we've got a 19 goal a season player who just won the league just done what we need to do coming yeah, back yeah. into our fold so obviously we're gonna we're gonna want good money you know we, it's as simple as that we're gonna want 15 20. Uh, i think i think to be honest with you 15 plus add-ons has got to be the minimum i think with martin as well to him coming in i think i saw him talk about it in talk sport with him coming in looking at a player yeah. who's obviously been one of the best players in the division scored so many goals which southampton really do need a goal scorer across the front line i think it would be ridiculous for him to come and just be like you know what just let him leave i'm not too bothered especially mm -hmm. when you don't need the money like it's been said from the start of the summer southampton don't need money to be coming in so i guess going and burnley kind of go low ball which we kind of do with every deal we ever go for yeah we always it's, put it's a low ball bit in. yeah and then we, we accelerate as the window goes on but i think the reason that it's kind of lasted this long is because we know exactly how much southampton want like we've got other tr transfers i mean such a tovaleri the belgian journalist said we have like 60 different players all tapped in at the same moment, just waiting to find the right one that we want. And we've done it all the way through the window. We've already spent quite a bit of money. So I don't think it's the fact that we can't afford to go buy him, which I know a few people have seemingly said, but I don't think that's yeah. the case. I think it's more so. I doubt it. Yeah, like we've got, we've just spent 19 million on a completely inexperienced goalkeeper because Vincent Company loves them. So I don't think it's the fact that we can't spend the money. I do think it's more so we're going for all our main targets, get everyone in all the positions that we've got. Company's always said he wants two brilliant players in every position. So the fact that we've already got, obviously the wingers are sorted now realistically. I don't think Teller's a must by any means, but mm. I think we're kind of, we've got we've got our team sorted and then Teller is another one at the end of the window where if we have the money left over after we've gone and bought another centre midfielder, another left back, then I think we'll go back in from because we know how much he's how much going to be worth there's no yeah. negotiating about it it's going to be 15 million with a bit of add-ons on to make the deal it's going to be around a 20 million package i think if we are to go and get him and i don't think there's any change in that i mean teller like yeah. you said before i mean he's been at southampton before he clearly enjoys playing for southampton and as much as i'm i, I do think that he enjoyed playing for us loads last season oh if yeah he can absolutely stay, yeah. If he can stay with Southampton and do another brilliant season like he did last year and then go up with Southampton again, I don't think there's going to be too much wrong from doing that because really, mm. if you come up, you're going to be in a similar position to we are this season. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah what precisely. Think. But yeah, I do I do kind of understand at the same time. If I was a Southampton fan, I would want it done as soon as possible because the later it goes on, the harder it is for you to then go replace. Like He's such a good champ, like championship player. You won't get many better goal scorers to come and play in the championship. He's so fast, technically brilliant. He can go past people. He's finishing like he, he absolutely, mm. he didn't miss many chances. I think he scored two hat-tricks in one month at some stage last season. So for Southampton, he would be absolutely such a massive player. And I guess going out and trying to get, get that back, get, get a player that's just as good as him with just a few weeks after the window, if we do come in late, I think could end up making negotiations even harder, you know, where he's maybe want yeah. a little bit more, but. I guess it depends who you keep a hold of as well. If you keep a hold of James Ward Prowse, you might be more might might want to sell Tara a little bit more. It just kinda of depends how it works out, I think. But 
Either way, I think Teller's going to be absolutely buzzing. Whichever way it goes, he'll be fine. Mm. But uh, yeah, thanks, thanks Rob for coming on and talking. I appreciate it. Make sure you go check him out on Twitter. I'll put the link in the description uh, and on screen now. And uh, yeah, cheers. See you guys in a bit.